Solid DJ here. Today I'm going to talk about how to get certain critical documents from your records in order to you know, take advantage of some either government or locally uh, privately owned organization benefits for which you might be eligible. So you're trying to get a VA home loan for example or trying to prove your military service to try to get some other benefit. Sadly and confusingly most, if not all, of the organizations that are offering a service or benefit based on your military service will automatically say, show me your DD-214. Well, for a great many service members, particularly reservists, this is a distressing request. The Department of Defense Form, or DD Form 214, is the Certificate of Release or Discharge from Active Duty. It is, or should be, issued whenever a service member completes a tour of active duty of 90 days or more. Now, whether or not you as a reservist qualifies for this document is widely variable and depends on whether you have completed the required amount of active duty service. A great many reservists only have, if they're lucky, a DD-214 when they completed their basic training and advanced training at the beginning of their military careers. It is entirely possible for a reservist to complete 20 or more years of service and never receive another DD-214 because they never had another tour of active duty that was long enough to qualify for one. Annual training and other short terms of active duty do not qualify. So two weeks here, three weeks there, those do not qualify for a 214. This can leave reservists seeking to take advantage of service-based benefits in a bit of a quandary. Now, for shorter terms of active duty, there is another form called the DD-220, or Active Duty Report, which is generally issued for those shorter terms of active duty, but even then, for annual training and many shorter terms of active duty service, those are generally not generated uh, and given to the reservist. So what do you do if you need to prove your service to an organization or a government agency? There are options, believe it or not. If you are a currently serving reservist, you can find other documents in your electronic personnel record, and every service has one. Now, it varies on how easily they can be accessed, but every service has one. The most useful document you can find, generally, is your retirement point statement. Why? Because this statement shows, or should show, your entire military career and how many points you earned during, those, during each year of service, and showing that you were an active participant. If you are an enlisted member, you can also find the DD Form 4, which is the enlistment or re-enlistment document. If you are an officer, you can find your appointment as a commissioned or a warrant officer. Some organizations, particularly civilian agencies, may not understand what these documents are. You may need to explain, politely, what the documents mean and, or give them contact information for, a, for someone at your unit or a retirement services officer. They can help explain what the documents mean and hopefully enable you to get whatever benefit you're seeking. If you're a member of the Army or Air National Guard, you should have a copy of, let me rephrase that, if you were a member of the Army or Air National Guard, you should have received a, a copy of National Guard Bureau, NGB, Form 22, which is a report of separation and military service. While it is somewhat erroneous to say this, uh, you can consider the NGB 22 to be the equivalent of a DD-214 for National Guard service. It's not for active duty service, it's for the entire span of National Guard service and it's a very good document. It even looks similar to a 214. But it's only verifying your National Guard service. 
Sadly, if you're discharged from any other reserve component, there is no single source document other than our point statement which proves your military service. Now, what can you do if you were National Guard, particularly, and need a copy of your discharge documents? Well, for the National Guard of any state, there is a person at your state headquarters who can request records for you. Some of them may need a signed standard form, or SF-180, which is a request pertaining to military records, or they might have a locally produced form that they want you to sign before they access your records. If you separated from service after 2005, that state level person will likely have access to the Interactive Personnel Electronic Records Management System. I know that's a lot. We just call it iPerms for short. Uh, they can access iPerms and be able to pull the documents you need very quickly. If you separated prior to 2005, that person will likely need to access your state records archives warehouse to get the documents you need. If you served in a different reserve component, the first step is to contact your branch of service or if you're currently serving, access your electronic record. I've placed links to each services record in the show notes below, so if you can, if you, uh, yeah, pardon me, um, if you can make use of those yourself, feel free. Uh, if not, then uh, you may need to go to National Archives. If your branch of service no longer has your records, National Archives is generally the only avenue of approach afterwards. The National Archives and Records Administration, or NARA, will definitely want an SF Form 180, that's redundant, SF Form, uh, an SF 180 from you in order to fill your request. You can mail or fax the, the signed form, or you can submit a request online. See my notes below for a link to the NARA website and a link to an SF 180. Now here's a hint. If you served in multiple components, such as the Navy Reserve and the Army National Guard, and you are requesting records from NARA, do not mention on that request that you were National Guard. NARA will, or at least has in the past, every time I've seen them, refer you to your National Guard's particular state in order to get records if you mention your Guard service. So keep that to yourself. It is possible, especially if you are in several branches of service, that no one source will have your complete record. Naturally, the ultimate responsibility for maintaining a complete record falls on the service member. I will compile and post a page on my website of as many of the state National Guard records managers as I can find. Uh, building this complete list will take me a little time, so please check back if you don't see your state listed. That's it for today. If you have any questions, please post them below. Thank you for watching, and of course, thank you for your service. If you liked what you heard on today's video, then please go below and give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to this channel. Also, please let other people know about this channel and the information it can provide for them. If you have questions or comments, then please have no qualms about posting them in the comments section below. Please remember the RC Retirement YouTube channel and the RCRetirement.com website are not recognized or endorsed by the Department of Defense, the Department of Veterans Affairs, or any other government agency. The information presented in these resources are for informational and entertainment purposes only. Also, the content of either of these resources should not be considered financial or legal advice. Please consult with your own legal counsel or financial planner before making any decisions based on what you have learned here. As always, thank you for watching the RC Retirement YouTube channel.